ancient Sparta, trying to recreate some classic movie memories. Unfortunately, there was no giant pit, so we decided to move on and we ended up finding a pretty cool shipwreck instead. Hey team, um, we're moving on from this site now and we're going to go check out another ancient ruin. I think it's called Mycena or something around those lines. Um, we'll Google it for you. But yeah, we're going to go check it out now. Um, and then we might look to go to somewhere along the beach again probably. Um, just to chill out and just enjoy our rest of the summer. Where did you get that orange? Side of the road. <laughs> as we're driving through an orchard. Reach out and pluck it off the tree. Oh, sour. Should have waited for it to ripen a little bit more. We got that. We got that one though. Situated on a rocky hill, 40 to 50 meters high, commanding the surrounding plain as far as the sea. The site of Mycenae covered 30,000 square meters and has already been known throughout history. What do we have here, Tex? Your classic too. I don't know what the acoustic's going to be like inside. <laughs> this, is when, this, this is when you get noticed. Stop. Oh. This is where Dylan gets scouted as far as. It's only later, I know. New hill, bonnet, sine, le pare. Oh, the acoustics are quite good. Ooh. That's crazy. The camera doesn't do it justice. Apart from the incredible acoustics, these tombs called Thelos were constructed by cutting vast amounts of dirt and stone from the hill or mountainside and excavated into beehive shaped rooms made of large stones built to house the dead. The bodies of rulers and royalty were placed into the small holes of the floor along with their worldly possessions. Nine Thallus tombs were discovered in Mycenae, although tragically most produced few artifacts as their obvious nature made them prone to looting. I don't think I've ever been in a tomb like that before. Yeah. In Greek mythology, the city was founded by Perseus, who gave the site its name after his sword fell to the ground and was regarded as a good omen. However, history tells that the city was inhabited since Neolithic times. It was not until 2100 BC that the first walls, pottery finds, and pit and shaft graves were made. BC, the first large-scale palace complex is built, the Citadel of Mycenae. With its strategic position for the control, it is the kingdom of the mythical Agamemnon, the most important and richest palatal centre of the late Bronze Age in Greece. Celebrated artifacts from Mycenae include five magnificent beaten gold burial masks, gold diadems, carved rings, cups and a lion head, including swords and daggers, and much, much more. Mycenae and the Mycenaean civilization began to decline around 1200 BC. It is unclear what caused the destruction of Mycenae, although one of the leading theories holds that Mycenae underwent years of civil strife and social upheaval. Higgins getting hungry guys. So we're gonna look to get a campsite soon. Just gonna go check out a treasury. And then go from there. Hey, Tex. <laughs> Pretty cool, though. Before leaving, we thought we should check out the last tomb, the Treasury of Atreus, 
also known as the Tomb of Agamemnon, it is the largest and most impressive of the nine Thalos tombs. Despite the two commonly used names, neither Agamemnon or Atreus are buried here. A German archaeologist gave the tomb its name in the era in 1879, because at the time the structure was thought to have been the treasure house of Atreus, one of the legendary kings of Mycenae. Tripod and speaking about taking off us, uh, but not to worry, came in anyway. Um, yeah. Not really sure why I'm not. Anyhow, we shall see you later. Switch back in time. Where are we going? To a campsite. We should get there. Around 20 to 6. Jesus. So we're heading to this campsite now. Um, and if it's nice, we might stay two nights, which is a really nice feeling that we might not have to drive tomorrow. I feel like the last couple of days have been really hectic with long drives and just doing stuff. Um, yeah, it could be nice if we can stay for a couple of nights. Um, and then move on to another beach um, and then on up towards Athens some other archaeological sites but yeah we'll see hey guys so I've just arrived um, and set up and there's like three campers on site and it's really quiet and nice i um, just got time for the sunset um, let's sit up a little bit outside and had a snack, um, but we might go eat dinner at the restaurant they have here, um, which should be really nice. Hey team, um, we haven't really been filming much while we've been staying here, um, but been here for a couple of days. Mm -hmm. Been quite nice actually. Just been chilling out. Don't even know really what we've been doing. Went for a swim. I saw a massive fish. Massive. Um, but right now we're going to some more ancient ruins and then we're going to probably go to another site tonight. Cool, All right? Ta ta. Nice. So we're just at Epidabros, um, about to check out the theatre. It's in the car park now. Tegan's working up a bit of lunch because it's getting that time. Um, so we're going to go do that and then join the masses and check everything out. Um, but yeah, it should be pretty cool. It's an, unfortunately another 24 euros for two people, which is just a lot of money. It yeah, adds up. But yeah, we're going to do that now. Okay, bye. Ancient theatre of Epidurus is regarded the best preserved ancient theatre in Greece in terms of its perfect acoustics and the fine structure. It was constructed in the late 4th century BC and was finalised in two stages. Due to its incomparable acoustics, the actors can be perfectly heard by all 1500 spectators, as you can even hear the sound of a pin dropping. century BC provided accommodation to the numerous visitors of the century, pilgrims, patients and their companions. In antiquity this kind of building was known as Katagoga, which means what? hostel. It is estimated that the building had in total 160 rooms. Mm. It is characterized that an original form of the building. Epidurus is strongly associated to the healing god Asclepios. According to the ancient Greek mythology, Epidurus was the birthplace of Asclepios 
healing god and son of Apollo. As it grew in fame as an important healing center, it was used to gather sick people from all over Greece, and as the demand for healing grew, the sanctuary was created. Within the sanctuary, there was also a temple, dormitories, and baths to help patients recover from various diseases. Unfortunately, two major earthquakes in 551 and 522 AD caused many damages to the sanctuary, and gradually it was entirely destroyed by wars, attacks, and natural disasters. What do you think of it? Um, that was alright. It's really expensive. Think about it. Yeah. Probably spent like a hundred euros going to three different sites. This is crazy. Which is nuts, considering like what they offer. Yeah. But it's alright. It's sort of a place you need to see once and then you've seen it, I guess. Um. Yeah, yeah well, that's kind of it, isn't it? Like. Yeah. No, we can definitely say we don't need to come back. Yeah. <laughs> um, but at the moment we're actually looking up some campsites for tonight. We need to get some electricity to do this video and then... And there's also this sunken city that are now uh, engulfed in water. So it'll be pretty cool to do a snorkel around there, I think. That's kind of like the ultimate combination of what we like. Bit of old stuff, bit of water, bit of a snorkel. And um, that'd be good as well. Plus it's boiling today. I don't know how hot it is, but it must be up there. So we um, are on our way to the campsite. Um, just 20 minutes away, and then it's a little walk to get to the sunken city, but um, it looks quite cool. You can actually see it from uh, Google Maps. We actually found this campsite in um, the ACSI uh, camping card book that we received with our card. Um, and it's actually been really handy. So we've branched out from Park for night. Um, and yeah, it's actually worked really well. Um, and it gives you the prices there as well, which is good. Um, but yeah, I can't wait to jump in the water. It is hot. All right guys, so we've just um, got to our campsite, um, which is pretty stunning and really on the beach. Um, we're gonna go for a snorkel and check out the sunken city. We're gonna snorkel all the way there. So I'm not quite sure how far that is. Hopefully not too far. But um, yeah, it's pretty relaxing. It's a nice time of day. Very, very warm and can't wait to get in the water. Unfortunately, when we got into the water, it was pretty murky. Apparently there had been a huge storm roll through earlier that week which had disrupted the seabed and made a bit of a mess on the shore. We didn't mind a bit of murk, but hopefully it meant that we wouldn't miss the sunken ruins that we were trying to find. After a decent swim we were starting to feel like we wouldn't find them, but suddenly out of nowhere the water started to clear and we could see the signs of ancient walls. Yeah, and I, I swear I saw pots on reviews, so those pots have been great. Oh, not bad! 
Not bad. <laughs> That's not bad. Hey guys, so um, we went for that snorkel. Um, we got back just a little while ago. Um, and it was actually pretty cool. I wasn't sure what to expect. Um, and it looked quite big on Google Maps, but when we were there, we like couldn't find part of it. And we were like, oh, maybe it's just not there. Um, but it was really cool. <laughs> it was, yeah. Those pots were cool. Yeah, they were like these pots, and there was quite a few big fish as well. And on the way over, we snorkeled over from where we are. How far do you think that would have been? Mm, it's okay and it was really murky on our side and it was kind of creepy and freaky you were just like crossing over old barbed wire fences and there were tires and chairs it was like a an apocalyptic movie or something like that um but then we got to the ruins and it all cleared up which was really nice um and we decided to walk back because we were over swimming <laughs> I wasn't um, expecting it to be so close. Neither. Just like, we're kind of just, I don't know, relied on Google reviews. And they suggested that this campsite over the other ones around the area, and it's actually quite nice. I mean, we legit can't get any closer. Mm. Well, we can, but then we might get our feet wet. Well, the campsite right next door has a big fence up. Yeah. So there's another campsite which we were thinking about going to and with like a big gate fence which I can understand like you know anyone can walk along here yeah. and that's right but I think that comes with the territory and to be honest yeah, I'd easily take that risk in order to be relaxed like this. Yeah. Crazy eh? It's insane. Oh, there's heaps of cats. <laughs> yeah, otherwise we're just gonna chill out. It is really calm. It's just like I think I'm gonna enjoy falling asleep to that noise tonight. Probably gonna wake up five times to go to toilet. Like looking at it, I feel like I'm not mentally prepared for today's hike. <laughs> I mean, we technically have to hike up to the top of those. Oh god, okay. <laughs> Inside that? Just got all our pennies together. <laughs> Should have enough to go inside the island. Round dairy free, gluten free ice cream. In heaven. <laughs> hmm. Okay, guys, um, we are going to make a uh, minced. A mince pie. A mince pie in old Nelly the camper van. And I'm just going to show you a couple of bursts as we make that pie. Cool. <laughs> 